So we've got one, so it's going to start in 2014 and run at the end of uh, 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 when an election is supposed to be. It started this year with five years, yeah. which will be exactly what right. Thank you for your point. Right, well now, time is pressing. We're going to move straight on, please, to the opposition business item. 30 minutes for, for this, please. Uh, Councillor Alex Brockett. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, this is a very serious motion that emanates from the very real and very imminent threat uh, to our emergency services right here in Barnet. Um, colleagues of mine will uh, elucidate their way on about the cuts to the accident emergency department, the cuts to the uh, fire department, uh, but I'm going to focus uh, in my few minutes at the uh, forefront of this motion about the very real threats to our uh, police uh, stations, namely uh, the front counter promotion. I will also look at uh, the cuts to the numbers of police officers. And let's deal with this issue of the closure of the front desks, of, or the, uh, the very real danger of uh, uh, closure of the front desks of Barnet and Whetstone Police Station. Geographically, this is extremely concerning. It really places those in the north. You know, places that are in the line, particularly those in the north and the east of the line, in a very perilous situation. The only full 24 hour service uh, police station in the borough will be in Collindale. There will be no 24 hour, there will be no police station in the Chipping Bar constituency. And the 24 hour police stations, there will be no 24 hour service police station all the way from Collindale. Sorry, Councillor. Councillor Coleman, I can hear you here. Somebody is speaking, that's very discourteous. Well, it's very much here for the Sun members. I can assure you it's an important issue to those on this side of the chamber because there will be no uh, um, uh, police station to involve the as mentioned, and this area between Condor and Edmonton is going to have to cater uh, without uh, a 24 hour service uh, uh, police station. So, from the geographical perspective, not to mention, of course, the potential closures in Southgate, Whitmore Hill, Parksmere. Uh, in Muswell Hill, these areas will really place that part of the borough in a perilous So I'm very curious as to the attitudes of, of councillors here today, particularly though in that part of the borough. Not just geographically, we often hear the argument in advance that the kids are on more modern ways to communicate with police, namely from the internet and for other means, that we should do away with traditional front counter uh, face to face communications. I find that argument so absurd. Just because we have modern, uh, we have you know, modernisation advances, and I'm the first to welcome them, doesn't mean we do away with things that have worked in the past. Uh, just because we have the internet doesn't mean we don't use the phone, we don't send letters anymore. The advantage of modernity is that it gives you more options. The, uh, the fantasy of modernity is that it thinks that the uh, change always results in a better course of action. And not just from a, 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 a modernity perspective, look at it from the sense that people actually might not have the means to make uh, a phone call or use the internet. Or perhaps they don't choose to report the type of crimes they want to through that type of media. And what about the value that can be gleaned by an officer hearing the account face to face? By removing these options away from members of the public who are taking, uh, who are putting residents uh, safety at risk and you are actually striking the very fabric of the community that we should be so keen to protect. So that is why I am very keen, uh, and not to mention also that there are no real suitable alternatives. The ones that have been muted, namely uh, supermarkets and coffee houses, are so absurd I'm going to pay only that token reference to them. The second point I want to make is the very real danger of police cuts. Now, what do I mean by the least cuts? Let's get the facts very clear on the table. Um, in May 2010, there were 595 police officers. The proposals will be Barnet in 2015 with 564 police officers. That is a cut in real terms of 5%. And of course, that's actually a generous way of making it because the last figures I saw relative to October 2012 was that there were 520 officers in the borough. So therefore, there's actually a 13% cut. Now, I'm not going to be so simplistic as to equate numbers of police officers with uh, um, uh, levels of crime, but I find it very strange that when certain levels of crime are very dangerously high, namely burglary, namely violence against a person that we should be uh, uh, not resisting on all fronts, uh, uh, measures to cut police officers, because uh, we should be 
putting crime down rather than the numbers of police officers down. And that's why this motion is not a trifle debate, but actually a very, very important call for united action. We saw with the pressure over the Golders Green police station what action can achieve. And this motion asks all members to lobby and do what we are paid to do, which is fight to protect those services and violence that matter most to residents. And this motion is the first way of doing it. I commend this motion to the Chamber. I hope this is supported. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yes, uh, this business item does actually have a few good points, um, and in one which one would like to su support it. But on the other hand, some of the rhetoric in it, some, uh, it put across as just completely unsupportable. But I would like to just point out that uh, uh, Councillor Brodkin says that we're getting to these stations on the eastern side of the borough. Um, the, 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 the borough commander is only proposing uh, on, on closing front desks. He will not be closing High Barnet Station. He will not be closing the police station in North Finchley. And yet, yeah, because of me, there, there is a massive police station in North Finchley, it just doesn't have a front desk. So the area will be supplied with an awful lot of police officers. The borough commander has made it plainly clear there will be more warranted officers on the streets of Barnet. That means they will be able to uh, arrest people there and then, not like the current PCSOs having to ring up to get a warranted officer down to make an arrest. Barnet Police have also made a commitment that they will meet any resident anywhere of that choosing. If they wish to meet in a police station, they are perfectly at liberty to make the time to go and meet a police officer in a police station. All this uh, rhetoric coming from the Labour Party is, is, is the usual stuff that you get from Labour. You're trying to create a climate of fear which just is not there. Yes. The number of police officers you're trying to make out will decrease and there'll be nobody on the streets. That is not true. The patrol group, or what is known as the task group, uh, will actually become the task and patrol group and will go out onto the streets. This business item tells me quite a few other things about Labour. It means you're in total denial to the mess that this country is in. It means of the amount of effort that has gone into trying to create efficiencies to try and maintain services and keep frontline policing, fire brigades and, and uh, hospital services at their absolute maximum. And you talk about objecting to cuts, no cuts, no cuts. So where exactly are these cuts going to come? In case you haven't noticed, this country is on the brink of bankruptcy. It's been teetering yeah. on for three years now since you left it. Oh, Drop it! it. Drop it! On the other is say, keep on spending, keep on spending. Yeah, yeah. You complain about bombardment, and every time I bring to someone asking for your your reasons, whereabouts you're gonna you're gonna give me the cuts? You don't. No one ever replies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as for the fire brigade, you make an awful lot of noise. Well, what did the GLA member do today? Oh yeah, he objected. He objected to the extra fire uh, engine that was going to go in and end it. He objected to the faster times that might be for fire station in the past. So, what exactly are these scandalous changes and these that you put forward? Well, I'll tell you what exactly they are. Your scandalous changes amount to no changes to fire stations. Your scandalous changes amount to an extra fire engine attendant. Your scandalous changes are faster response times from those fire stations. Your scandalous changes will actually end up meaning more warranted officers on Barnet streets. Yes, you're absolutely right about the uh, front desk closures. Having two front desks down in uh, Golden Screen and Collindale is a complete waste of time. We need a second one in High Barnet open for the public. For Barry. And I, you know, we'll be lobbying the borough commander and the mayor of London to make sure that that, that change is happening. One minute, councillor. Thank you very much. In case you're interested, it takes 12 officers to man the four front desks that we have. You think it's funny, Bromley, don't you? We've got four officers, we've got 12 officers that man the front, the front desk for police. That's £300,000 plus overheads. That money would be better spent. And I'll tell you what is scandalous, it's the fact the Labour group did not 
support the Safer Communities Programme for Barnet. The Labour Group did not support the tougher sentences for burglary. And if you really want to stop the scandals, go and have a look and see what Gordon Brown did when he sold off gold at the lowest. Well, that's 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 Yeah. The mayor should be looking at 
at ways of improving the efficiency of the service. Not closing police stations and not putting our own in the city. Thank you. Thank you, uh, I'll come next to please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Councillor Cohen's is very eloquently made many of the points that I was hoping to um, try and follow up with a couple of points tonight. I did ask a question earlier about Strawberry Vale as in the kitchen. Um, and I think that Mr. Bain will, will, will get nearer to the answers. Strawberry Vale, as like many other states actually in Barnet and in the country, um, have issues that can only really be tackled by good uh, community but in the past, uh, dealing with unfamiliar officers sometimes led to a combative relationship between police and younger people in particular. I felt the introduction of PCSOs and say the neighbourhood to be changeable. In fact, it was a major part of the last Labour government's success in reducing crime and improving relations between communities and the police, especially ethnic minority communities. But now we're moving away from all that progress. We're using 54 uh, safer neighbourhood team officers from 189 down to 135. I have to ask if this is consistent with the mayor who vowed to make our streets and homes safer by putting 1,000 extra officers on the beat. If you want 1,000 extra officers on the beat, why would you cut the very front line of policing? Cutting our safer neighbourhood team by almost 30% from the day the last Labour government left office to the day the Labour government will return in 2015 is a betrayal of Barnet. Whatever happened to the Tory Donut strategy of focusing on the suburbs? They don't care about us anymore. We will be left with only one dedicated PC and one dedicated PCSO per ward. This is not what community policing looks like. And I have to ask a question. If this reconfiguration of neighbourhood policing is an operational decision, then why did the mayor and the borough commander, when did the mayor and the borough co commander stop believing that neighbourhood policing worked? I believe that this is a political decision to decimate SNT. SNTs is being forced uh, on borough commanders because of the cuts the mayor is making. At this rate, there will be no front line to policing in Barnet. Residents in Chipping Barnet will have nowhere local to go to to report crime in the entire constituency. They won't have a properly resourced local team either. If they want to see police, they have to dial 999. Given that 17 out of the 37 Tory councillors in this borough are councillors in Chipping Barnet, they ought to leave the mayor dangling from his zip wire and stand up for the people they're supposed to represent. Boris Johnson's last point on his nine point plan was to get a better deal for London from number 10. It looks to me he's just trying to get himself a better deal by moving into number 10. He may be the mayor of London, but he's not the mayor of London. One minute, no, so. I move my motion. Thank you, Mr. Ralph. I'm grateful for the enthusiasm from the other side. <laughs> <laughs> They don't want to hear about the fact that I might start off uh, with what I have to say by the comments made uh, in a note uh, by Liam Byrne, suggesting that there was no money. And I emphasise that point because everything that's being discussed today in relation to savings needing to be made across the board, across the public sector, firstly, because efficiencies are a good thing if it means that you're saving the taxpayer money. But secondly, at the same time, it's down to the failure of the former Labour government that the other side of this chamber seems to still support by having spent money you do not have and now not finding solutions to deal with these problems. Councillor Brodkin has referred quite clearly to the police service. I'm not going to talk about the other emergency services as a result of that. But when you talk about the police service specifically, is it wrong to suggest that they should also look for savings alongside every other government body? when it was your former government that put us in this position. It's also right to say that when we look at the police being asked to make 20% savings, there's also a 2020-20 approach suggested where they suggest 20% improvements in confidence should also be sought. And, quite rightly for the interest of the residents of this borough, 
there's also the requirement that by 2016 there will be a 20% reduction in key crimes that people in this borough uh, really want to address more than anything else. And then you look at some of these, burglary, criminal damage, <coughs> theft of motor vehicles, violence and robbery, for example. Things that your residents, no doubt, Councillor Rodkin, and mine and others, will complain about on a daily basis, perhaps. Things that they might have a fear of. Clearly, when people like you scare under them into the items that you bring to this council and the debate that you've brought forward here. But let's consider where the resources are. Boris Johnson quite rightly states that it's bodies before buildings. And there's a point to this. Because our residents would rather have warranted police officers, special constables, <coughs> PTSOs, on the street doing the job that they would want them doing, defending their interests. What is the point, and I'm talking about top Regia or SO or anything else, or any building, what is the point of having a building if it's underused? What is the point of having buildings which serve no purpose? It makes more sense to have the resources on the front line looking after the interest of the residents of this borough. And when that commitment is there, that there's an interest to reduce crime in these areas by 20%, what is so wrong with that? I give a brief example here. If there was trouble of some sort in this borough and more officers of the specialist nature were required, the territorial support group would not council. be based in Barnett. They would be drafted in from elsewhere. Yeah. If, for example, we had an armed robbery, the armed response vehicles, the SCFIT team, they wouldn't be in Barnet, they would be drafted in from wherever they are. I believe they're based in Whitechapel. So the point is that as long as you have relevant officers floating around, if I can phrase it that way, in the boroughs, around London where you need them, what difference does it make in terms of the policing elements of things as to where they are? I accept the point as the Chairman Barnet Councillor that I would like the counter service to remain where it is. But it is not the only way in which people communicate with the police service. If your house had been burgled, as a prime example, you'd phone 999. You wouldn't trot to a local police station and wait for people to complain in person. It's nonsense. I would simply state to you that I hope that we can lobby so that the council services can remain where they are. But I would suggest that you stop your scaremongering and we look for better resources from the police to work with other partners to make sure that if in fact these counter services do not remain where they are, that they can have a local presence uh, that will suit the residents of this borough. Thank you, Mr. Member. Thank you, Mr. Member. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Mayor. Um, just to note that the word scaremongering has been used in this chamber before. I well remember a few years ago suggesting that Free and Barnet Lightning was going to close, and I was told, no, that's just scaremongering. So sometimes, sometimes you scaremonger because there's real things to be scared of. That's a lie. Now, it is shameful what the coalition government is doing to our NHS. It is an effort to create a fragmented system of private local health companies. The National Health Service worked well, cost less good management than other similar systems, and was incredibly popular. So what they ask you for is, is a reversal of a popular saying. It did not need fixing, so why are you breaking it? The reason is clear, political ideology. The Health Service is expected to find 20 billion savings over four years. In addition, there is the imposition of an unnecessary and expensive top-down reorganisation of the whole system, <coughs> despite the pre-election pledge not to do this. Obviously, you cannot trust the coalition with our NHS. No way. Cameron also promised to cut the deficit and not the NHS, and has managed to do exactly the opposite. So when David Cameron, Andrew Lambert, and Theresa Villiers stood outside a Trace Farm Hospital, promising to keep the A&E and maternity there open, and promising not to have a top-down reorganisation of the NHS, they must have all known they were misleading local people. The NHS will never be safe in Tory hands. I am very frightened of what you are doing to the NHS. It's scaremongering because there's good reason to be scared. In the amendment, I have highlighted some very recent stories which indicate in a small way how we are already being affected by the cuts and changes that there are going to be, and there's more in the years to come. The government knew there would be strains on the health service, so they doubled the number of people who could wait longer than four hours in A&E between being registered and treatment. 
They reduce it. They reduce it to over 95 percent, and they're even failing to reach those new targets. The Care Quality Commission recently found both Trace Farm and the London Ambulance Service as understaffed, dangerously in one case. But on the ambulance service, I will read out the summary of the inspection report, and I'd like you to just absorb this and think what it means. Remembering this is, there's another two years of cuts to the ambulance service to, to come. We found the service was facing a higher demand than it could meet. Less urgent requests for an ambulance had been delayed as a result. We also found that the service was experiencing difficulty in ensuring that each ambulance had appropriate equipment available to meet people. One minute, councillor. This is the A&E coming out for people and they couldn't promise they got the right equipment. Are you happy with that? And while there, is an, and while there was a national campaign to reduce infection, and infection control is very important, early prevention, it had a slogan, catch it, bin it, kill it. At Barnet Hospital, they had a policy of catch it, bin it, keep it for a week. Is that how you control infection? Ridiculous. Barnet people are already suffering due to the actions of this government. We must urge our MPs to start to do something to protect the NHS and ensure there are sufficient resources directly to the health services. Support my amendment and so you still believe in the NHS. Time, so I won't waste, waste it. Partial Council Hoskins, ill informed and blatantly political diatribes against the mayor's But mind you, it does beg a belief. After all, it was his government and his wasteful, profitless mayor of London who almost brought the health service to its knees. You can't who was it who wasted billions of pounds on the ill fated NHS? Your bankers? So Labour government. Don't be who won this world the ruin? so many promising young doctors' careers by their ridiculous online application fiascos. It was the Labour government. And who was it who spent as if there was no tomorrow and left our children and grandchildren to repay the debt? But what I simply must do is to refute his dangerous and wrongful accusations that Barnet residents will be put at risk by the closure of the A&E department at Chase Farm. Perhaps I ought to remind you, Mr Mayor, and the whole Labour group, of the acceptance of all political parties on this council, of the findings of the clinical review panel of the BEH clinical strategy, that the continuance of the A&E provision at Chase Farm in its present form was definitely not in the best interest of either Barnet patients or any other patients in terms of safety, quality and sustainability. Councillor Rawlings even went further as a health and overview scrutiny committee on this particular subject when he not only accepted the findings and the then Secretary of State's four tests that had been met, but he said that in the interest of Barnet patients, the proposal simply had to be implemented and without further delay. <coughs> we on this side, on the other hand, have always been more circumspect and have always insisted that no A&E services or in fact inpatient maternity or paediatric services would cease at Chase Farm before the reprovision at Barnet Hospital has been successfully completed. And having continually pressed both for the funding and actual extension of these vital facilities at Barnet Hospital, we were therefore delighted to have formal acceptance of the business case and approved funding of £23 million for it at the beginning of this year. Mr Mayor, this administration needs no bidding to fight for more resources for Barnet Hospital or any other NHS services in this farm. Our record with successive governments and administrators speaks for itself, and I for one fully intend to continue this fight on behalf of the residents of Barnet. Councillor Brodkin, as Councillor Merck is uh, not here, will you take uh, her amendment as part of your substantive item? Yeah. Oh, Mr Mayor, um, and um, can I now use this time to actually summarise if there are no further speakers on this motion? Um, so let me just uh, recap what we've actually debated here, because the debate, as expected, has gone in different directions. Um, uh, my colleagues, Councillor Mitchell and Councillor Rawlings, uh, defended some of the very real services 
the piece of motion seeps out to the tech, namely SNT, the NHS. And what we've heard from the other side is distraction, distortion, and often downright inaccuracies. Starting with uh, Councillor Cohen, who last what I agree, but where I disagree, is to describe this motion as just rhetoric. No, this is not just rhetoric. This is a motion called your need to cast your vote and lobby the Mayor of London. This is about you taking direct action on behalf of the people who came to serve. It is not empty rhetoric. Real action can make a difference. Double screen, need your war. Actually, it has made a real difference of late because of genuine pressure. Pressure in the media, pressure from the public, pressure from politicians. Don't dismiss it so easily. This rhetoric, these kind of notions, are actually one of the lines of defence. So let's not dismiss it too easily. As for Councillor Rasberg, you see an intent on using the large majority of his speech to talk about the failure of, of, of previous national governments. This is about the current London government and its proposals for Barnet. And as well as other London governments, you seem to have held bent on focusing on the past. You seem to live in the past. We're talking about a couple of years the future. Don't waste time, and this goes to Council of Longstaff as well. Don't spend the taxpayers' money talking to us about what governments did two or three years ago. Serve your questions. in December in your ward experience uh, violence against them in person. And what the best you can offer is discussions about who sold the gold. The High Barlow residents would be quite frankly disgusted to hear their elected councillor spend his five minutes lecturing me about what national government is They would rather be together and look at opportunity to actually defend those services which are the fabric of their communities. I, with this motion, and that go, uh, and that, with this motion, is saying, uh, where's, where's, the money? where's the money? Just before we move to another division, in case you want to change your mind, it's quarter past nine now. We are running late. I'm quite happy to allow a division if that's what you want, but we should just fine. Just be aware of what you're doing to the timing of the rest of the evening. Thank you to sandwiches. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, there, there is a request for a division by more than 10 members standing in their seats on the amendment in the name of Councillor Mitchell. Mr. Mayor, how do you vote? Madam Jess, Mr. Mayor, how do you vote? Councillor Broad. Councillor Broadkin. Councillor Campbell. Councillor Coakley Webb. Councillor Dean Cohen. Councillor Jack Cohen. Councillor Melvin Cohen. Councillor Brian Coleman. Councillor Jeff Cook. Councillor Alison Cornelius. Councillor Richard Cornelius. Councillor David. Councillor Evangeline. Against. Shane. Councillor Farrier. Four. Councillor Fee. Against. Shane. Councillor Gordon. Against. Councillor Greenspan. Against. Councillor Harper. Against. Councillor Helena Hart. Against. Councillor John Hart. 
Councillor Houston. For. Councillor Hutton. For. Councillor Ioannidis. For. Councillor Jeff Johnson. For. Councillor Judy Johnson. For. Councillor Catry. Yes. Councillor Lobstar. Yes. Councillor Marshall. Yes. Councillor Kirk is not here. Yes. Councillor Mitra. For. Councillor Moore. For. Councillor Roll. Against. Councillor Roll McCauley. For. Councillor Lord Palmer. Yes. Councillor Suzette Palmer. Yes. Councillor Perry. Against. Councillor Francis. Yes. Councillor Rashford. Yes. Councillor Rand. Yes. Councillor Rawlings. For. Councillor Rayner. Against. Councillor Rogers. For. Councillor Rutter. Yes. Councillor Brian Salinger. Yes. Councillor Sargent. For. Councillor Scannell. Yes. Councillor Schneiderman. For. This is Salinger. Councillor Seal. Against. Councillor Shooter. Against. Councillor Sloven. For. Councillor Soder. For. Councillor Salvage is not here. Uh, Councillor Strongbill is against. Councillor Andreas Tamarini is against. Councillor Joanna Tamarini is against. Councillor Thomas against. Councillor Tomstone is not here. Councillor Tierney is against. Councillor Rose Brinkley Turner is against. Councillor Yell is against. Councillor Zubel is Thank you. 